a nonfiction box, and I, you know, branched out, and it was um, an amazing adventure to expand like that. Well, you mentioned you were living in Oaxaca at the time. Was that you mentioned that was a big part of the inspiration? What was it like living in Oaxaca? Uh, well, well, Oaxaca is. Uh, 2,000 miles from the U.S. border. It's it's you know next to Chiapas and Guatemala. It's the second poorest state uh, in uh, Mexico, which is uh, pretty poor. And my wife moved us down there. Uh, I was working on the Tiger then, and my wife moved us down there because she wanted to study ceramics and um, work with artists down there, with native artists. And I really went as a passenger, and I was still editing the Tiger. And we dropped into this place, and, and Oaxaca is really like the Florence of Mexico. You know, it's a very potent, rich art center, but it's also extremely poor. And one in three Oaxaqueños goes north to work. So, um, and you also had a personal connection prior to moving down there because your grandfather studied Indo. Yeah, there, there, art? there are many layers. Um, I, uh, despite all appearances, I actually have a long and complicated history with Mexico and my great-grandfather went down there in the 1890s and set up shop in Mexico City and opened a bank and became basically a Mexican even though he was from Indiana and uh, his daughter grew up down there my grandmother and she met my grandfather down there at a party and he was uh, coming out of uh, Harvard as a young archaeologist and went to Mexico to make his name and wrote uh, what really was the definitive book on the Aztec nation. So what kind of research did you have to put in, because this book deals mainly with migrants coming across the border, what kind of research did you put into the sort of the struggles of migrants coming across the U.S.-Mexico border? Well, I've, I've spent a lot of time on the border, actually. Uh, my wife is from Arizona, and so pretty much every year we, we make trips down there, and I've, you know, I've swum across the uh, Rio Grande before, and I've walked across the U.S.-Mexican border, camped out a lot in the desert on both sides of the border and I've actually you know witnessed smuggling operations unfolding in the desert uh, you know by accident uh, and so that's all been you know kind of fermenting in there all this time and so there are these you know that Oaxaca experience the, the family history my own experience on the border um, you know fueled it all and then you know you're meeting people in Oaxaca who've actually made this journey mm -hmm. And it's a harrowing journey, and, and when you you know when you look at the places they're coming from and looking at what they're giving up, uh, you know you basically you know kiss your wife and kids goodbye and head on a 2,000 kilometer journey to a border that you might not even survive the crossing of. You know it's it's you know it's courageous and uh, desperate. So, with that kind of research, was that coming from your journalistic background, your nonfiction writer background? You thought that was important to bring to the reader? Yeah, I mean I think there you know the this is real stuff. It's really happening. It is current. Uh, these are real dramas that are unfolding, and but largely, you know, out of the public eye. And you know, these people are totally anonymous. And you know, roughly 500 people die on the border every year trying to cross. And many of them have no names. They're buried as Jane or John Doe. No one knows who they are. And I wanted to uh, give them a voice. And uh, so, I mean, and, and the way this story came was really more as a visitation, honestly. And, you know, we can get into that if you want, but it, it's, um, it wasn't uh, sort of first degree, I'm going to write about illegal immigration. Well, let, 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 yeah, let's get into it. What, what was the visitation?